Hey everyone, um, I made a, a premium tutorial recently, which was this uh, compressor. I've had a few questions about this, about how you might render out the kind of individual elements for animation purposes, or just just to extract them so they're elements on their own, because I think this is more of a kind of user interface style render, and I can see why people want to do that. So this is just a quick video to show you that. So. This is the setup. Um, it's actually pretty basic, this one, in terms of the actual setup. Uh, let me just turn the grid off because it's annoying me a little bit. So if we wanted to render, let's say, just this button here, for example, and the shadow that it actually casts. So if you see here, you can actually just see that it's casting shadow downwards. There's a light directly above up here, uh, showing its light straight down. Um, and then there's actually quite a few different types of lighting in here so so if we wanted to just render this button and the shadow that it's casting what we have to do with this back plate is actually remove its texture so I'm going to delete that texture let me just delete that so I'm going to add a material and there's a special material in a special folder called shadow mat and we're going to drop that onto this back plate in place of the texture that we had before now there's a little bit of trial and error involved when using a shadow map. So I'm going to come to front view and I'm going to hit the render button and see what it does for me. And what happens now is it looks like the back plate's white. This is actually now transparent and only the shadow that you see will actually be rendered if we save out in a file format that accepts transparency. So what you can do is you can play with the white balance of this shadow map, so this white point here, and you just move it up or down depending on if you feel like you've got too much shadow, bring it down. If you feel like you haven't got enough, just bring it up. You do it. I usually do it in either 0.1 or 0.2 steps and just keep re render it. So I've set it to 0 0.8 there. Let's render that again. Okay, as you can see now, if I just jump between the two, this render is a quite a bit lighter. So there's less kind of shadow happening, I mean, and that might be right. If we just wanted to isolate this button, there's two ways you can do it. The best way I would say is to save this file as a completely new file name and just delete all the other elements out. It's it's not ideal, but it's just it's the cleanest and easiest method. You could use a load of render tags to kind of hide these around, but I think then you're really starting to mess up your file. Make a new file, delete the stuff you don't want. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at that in Photoshop. So that render there came out like this in Photoshop. So you can see the transparency. And then if I fill that background color with, let's try something different. I always seem to use lime green on tutorials. So let's do it again. With something like that there. So you can see I filled that background and these shadows are kind of starting to show up now. Uh, so that's how you do that, that's how you kind of render transparencies and isolate elements in Cheetah 3D. Hope you found this useful guys, thanks for watching.